Howdy, howdy. So today's topic are, is all about the shifts that we need to make in order to get to the CEO and not just CEO in words, right? It, you know, I did on Boss's Day, I did this post about how it, it feels good to say that we're the boss, right? I refer to myself as the online travel boss. Many of you guys, you know, love to call yourselves the lady bosses, bosses of this, bosses of that, right? But being an entrepreneur, right, you know, we all love to call ourselves entrepreneurs. We're hustling until the break of dawn, you know, a hustle. I mean, there's so many great shirts and shirts and hats and all sorts of paraphernalia about the hustle mentality and the entrepreneur mentality, right? And what I want to really talk about is bunk all of those mentalities. I want the CEO mentality. What I want you to do is I want you to stop and think for a minute. What do you think about when you think of the word CEO? Like what are the first words that come to mind when you hear somebody say CEO? I think golf. <laughs> when I think of a CEO, the first thing I think of is golf. I think you know, this guy is, and I think guy, that's probably not a good thing, but that's what I do. I think guy, I usually think a Caucasian male who's in his 40s on the golf course, right? Usually disconnected to the, to the, the little people who are doing all the work, right? What do you, when you think about what the CEO does, like, you know, like his day life, he or she's day life, right? What do, you, what do you think of when you think about that? Like, what do you think their day looks like? You know, I think of uh, making deals, you know, big cheese. Yeah, okay, I like these. I don't really think of the word hustle when I think of a CEO. Do you guys, do, when you think of the word CEO, do you envision some guy or gal hustling about trying to get a bunch of shit done, right? Do you think of that when you're thinking about CEO? Like, does that come to mind when you're thinking of the word CEO? In meetings? Okay, that's fair, right? You know, I think of big decisions, partnerships, right? Shaker and mover, big decision maker, right? I think of a parachute, million dollar parachute, golden parachutes when things go wrong, right? That's what you think, right? Thinking about when you don't think of the hustle mentality when you think of the word CEO. That's not what comes to mind when you think of the word CEO. Sharanti uh, uh, puts looking at presentations via PowerPoint in a boardroom, then cocktails afterwards. Now, I consider myself PowerPoint queen in my corporate life. I was known as the <laughs> CEO PowerPoint uh, queen. I, I could crank out a PowerPoint like nobody's business, but you know, Tay, that's exactly what I think too, right? There's some minion like me who was writing the PowerPoints to tell them how the hell things really were so they could make a decision, you know, and literally all you needed from that, that person, that executive making the decision was a nod of their head and everybody else would make, you know, make it happen, cap it on the back end, right? But definitely boardroom, I think big giant boardroom, <laughs> you know, chairs, I always love going to the, the top executive uh, boardroom and have those meetings because man you sit in those chairs and you sink down and it would be like butter i mean i think the leather literally is made out of butter in those boardrooms right cocktails afterwards i do like cocktails afterwards and during <laughs> so okay those are great those are all great thoughts about what you think about the word ceo but when you think of the word employee or entrepreneur what do you think what are some of the words that come to your mind when you think of that, when you hear that? I hear, you know, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to taint, I don't want to taint the pool. What are the words that come to your mind when you think of entrepreneur, small business owner, entrepreneur, online boss? What is that? What, is, what do you guys think of? Business person? Okay. All right. Fair. Some of the things that come to mind is what you guys are thinking about or what are some of the things that come to mind? When you hear the word entrepreneur, I usually think solo person on my own. Susie, it's just like you take the words right out of my mouth. I usually think solo person doing everything, work. <laughs> yeah. 
worker, <laughs> person doing everything, right? Uh, very creative entrepreneur, okay, that's good. Um, it's a creative person who's able to step out on their own. You know, responsible for everything. This is correct. <laughs> Entrepreneurs are the ones who are responsible for everything. So another, you know, sort of mentality or thing that comes to mind when I think of entrepreneur, what's told is, you know, you got to hustle, right? Come on, let's hustle. Who's up? You know, I'll see people's posts in, on, on Facebook or Instagram. Who's up with me, right? Mill at two o'clock at night, right? Talking about who's up here, who's who's out, who out there is working on their business like I am, right? And then there'll be a bunch of people that respond and uh, uh, disciplined, courageous, risk taker. These are all great words, right? These are all great words. But when it comes to work, I don't think of golf when I think of entrepreneur. Um, there is, uh, I don't think of, I don't think of, does everyone else hear an echo? And when I think of uh, entrepreneur, I don't think of boardroom. I don't think of, I don't think of golf. I don't think of, uh, sorry, now I can't turn myself off. I'm trying to turn my volume down. I don't think of, um, I don't, I don't think of, Let's see. What don't I think of? I don't think of golf and I don't think of relaxing, right? Somebody who is, I think, I think of entrepreneur as somebody who's stressed out, got a lot of things to do, and there's never enough time, there's never enough people, and they're always behind the eight ball. Now, great thing about entrepreneurs, I don't think just male. I think, you know, immediately when I hear the word entrepreneur, I don't automatically assume that it's male. Um, I don't think any sort of sex. But when I hear CEO, in my mind, I always think Caucasian male. Erroneously, but that's what I think. So, you know, and the reason why I want you to think about these things is, is what do you call yourself in your business, right? And is it really important? Maybe the word that you know, the, the word that you call yourself is probably not as important, though. But the mindset that you have around what you do in your business is important. And oftentimes we are working from either an entrepreneur mindset or an employee mindset, not a CEO mindset. And so what I want to do is I want to talk about the difference between the two and where we need to shift as the visionaries of our business into these CEO minded people who are really taking our businesses to the next level, right? Lots of you tell me that what you want to do is create a legacy that is going to live beyond you, right? I, I, I will look back. We lost a really great, great entrepreneur in um, CC. She, she had the six figure. Uh, she was a six figure chick. She unfortunately passed away this year from cancer. And if you know her story, she was uh, fierce, 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 fierce. And she created a legacy of online coaching, African American lady. And she started her, her story and she started her business really just in the pursuit of finding a way to fight cancer. Right. And so she started her online space, just looking for recipes, looking for ways to holistically fight cancer. So she started in that business and then taught herself everything. And then the reason I bring her up is because she created a million dollar online coaching business, right? For everyone who can do pretty much any type of business. So she didn't specialize in any one business or anything. And she effectively created a million dollar business that has succeeded her even in her death. So she is still selling products. She is still selling her knowledge even beyond her death. So she's created a legacy for her family, even though she's not with us anymore. And don't get me wrong. I still get goosebumps every time I think about her and what she's done. And many of you tell me that's exactly what you want to do, that you want to create a travel business and leave a legacy for your family. Many of you tell me that you were doing this for your children. Many of you were telling me that you want to show your kids that there is something bigger and better than just working for someone else, but you are coming to the table 
with an employee mindset. You are coming to the table with a in, um, entrepreneur mindset. And I want to really make sure that we understand what the difference between a CEO and an em- entrepreneur mindset, employee mindset is, right? Because many of us are, we don't know, right? We, we, we jumped into entrepreneurship and we took the same mindset that we took when we're working for someone else into the business that we've created. And effectively, all we've done is created a job for ourselves. We've not created an organization with a vision, right? And there's a difference. You've jumped effectively into one job, into another, and you're never going to play golf. You're never going to be in the boardroom sitting back, making some decisions, looking at some PowerPoint that someone on your team has created, you making the decisions and then having cocktails. That's not going to be you because you you don't have the mindset for that. But you have the opportunity to change that today. Let's start today by talking about it, okay? All right, Who, who's with me? Like, who's who's following me and is on that same page? You want to be a CEO mindset. You want to have, you want to have an organization that potentially succeeds you even if you are not working it, right? I'm not suggesting, you know, even in your death, but that you want an organization that beats regardless if you are in front of it or if you're in Cancun, (laughs) right? That's what I want, right? I want an organization that when I go on vacation, I'm not like stressed the hell out thinking that everything's going to fall apart because, I'm the one that has to do everything, make all of the decisions, and it doesn't run without me. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not what I want. I do not want a job that I'm slaving at like I did in my corporate job. And many of you who, who've been doing this business, that's exactly what you have is another job. You're working, and the only difference is, is you own the job and that somebody else owns it instead of somebody else. And the worst part of that is if you own the job, that means you don't make any money. You've got all the risks. You've got all the worry. You've got all of that. And I guess last week's session when I was asking you about your why, to me, it's almost easier to work for somebody else than to work for yourself without the financial glory to be able to walk away in the event that you need downtime and you need to refuel, right? All right, so let's talk about this employee mindset, entrepreneur mindset as well, versus CEO mindset. Before I do that, let me introduce myself. So for those that are new, because I do see some new faces now, my name is Sunday Gardner. I am the online travel boss and talk all things launching, operating, and mindset for a successful travel business. Thank you so much for joining me live. I am super excited to be here and super excited that you are here as well. And so tonight... As I've set you up, that's what we're going to be talking about is employee mindset versus CEO mindset. So we're talking about the three shifts that you need to make to have to make that happen. I'm going to give them to you. We're going to talk a little bit about that and then I'm going to go, right? We're not going to spend too much time on this because, you know, I know that you have a busy schedule and I want to make sure that you guys get back to what it is that you were doing before you decided to join me. So number one shift that you need to make is You guys decide, and and I include myself in this, you decide I'm fed up and I'm going to start my own business. Whatever that catalyst is that makes you decide to jump, that's great. That is just the spark. But to make this shift from being an entrepreneur who's working in their business and not leading the vision of their business and really leading the torch and the flame is that you need to ensure that one, you have a vision. You need to create a vision for which people can then have a North Star to follow. And so what does that mean? What does that mean? A nor- Like a vision, right? You need to have a vision. A vision means that you've got to have a reason that people will want to work with you. Um, You need to have a reason why people will work with you, right? You need a reason why people will do business with you. You need to have a vision that people will want to follow, right? And I don't just mean that in the sense of, well, you know, I still travel and that's what my vision is, right? That's all I need. I just need to have that, you know, that's what I got, right? I'm going to start selling travel. Somebody told me about the opportunity. I'm going to jump and that's it. 
right? That's not a vision. That's a job. You just jumped into a job, right? I'm going to sell travel is a job. Selling travel is a job, right? Expedia people who get on the phone and you call Expedia, you go on Priceline.com and you dial their 1-800 number and they help you find a vacation. That's a job, right? Is that what you want? Do you want a job or do you want a travel business that really creates something for your clients? There's a difference. And you need to create that vision, right? So an employee works a job, a CEO has a vision that people follow. Does that make sense, right? What's your vision for your travel business? Do you have one? Have you thought about it? What is it that you are doing besides just selling travel? What is, what is it, what makes you special? What makes you the bomb.com that everyone wants to come to to experience what you create? What are you curating in your business, right? So only you can define that, but if you haven't defined that, that's what makes you different between somebody who has a job and somebody who has a vision, right? right. Many of you guys will tell me, I'll talk to you guys, you know, we'll do a quick chat and I'll talk to you and you'll tell me and I'll ask you like, you know, where do you see your business? What is it that you want for your business? And you guys will tell me, you're like, you know, I want, I want, I want, <laughs> unfortunately, many of you tell me that, you know, I want a luxury, I want to sell luxury travel. Well, what does that mean? Right? Who's your client? What does that mean? Like, what does luxury travel mean? I don't know what that means. And if I don't know what that means, and you don't really know what that means, how's your client going to know what that means? How is the person that you want to attract going to know what that means, right? Everybody wants these key words and these words that sound sexy, but you don't even know how to articulate what the vision is of how you're going to make that happen, right? You don't, you don't, you don't know what that means. So the vision really is the feeling that people have when they think about your business, right? My vision for my coaching business is I want to help people who are passionate about travel find a way to launch successfully and operate successfully, right? Without the stress and worry that they have a step-by-step -step program and they have the support to do it, right? That's my vision, right? And my vision is around helping African-American women, not that I don't help it, help other other races and I don't help men because I do. I have non-African-American women in my client group. I have men in my client group. But my vision was really to provide a voice for African-American women who wanted to start uh, their travel business and didn't have anywhere to go. That vision for me was clear when I said it and it's still clear in everything that I do from now on, right? So that will be the vision, you know, that will be the legacy that I leave in this business when I'm long gone. Right. What is the vision for your travel business? Do you have one? If you don't, you need one. That is going to be the difference between you and somebody who's just going to work a business that may, may, may be here or may not be here in a couple of years or something that you're just simply working, but is really not the, the, the thing that people are going to be like, wow, wow, that, you know, that experience that I had with her business was like no other. I, I want to tell my friends, my family, and I, I want it again. Right. And I want to keep coming to it. Right. That's the difference. That's number one. That is a shift that you need to make. You need to have a vision. Everyone needs to understand it, including yourself. And you need to work towards it. Number two. Right. The number two shift that you need to make is it's great to have a vision. But if you don't have a plan and all you do is and all you're doing is tasks that go nowhere, you're always going to be an employee of your own business. Right. If you don't have a plan and all you do is act. Right. So. People will say, you know, you need to act. Action is so important, but action without a plan is chaos. It's chaos, simply put, right? Have you, have you, I'm going to give you an example, right? I'll wake up one day, one day, every day, it's, it's, it's so, it's, uh, similarly the way my life is, right? I wake up in the morning, right? And then I just start working on stuff. I look at my email, I'm on Facebook and you know, somebody's pinging me and I've got, you know, somebody on my team's pinging me. People in my chat box are pinging me. I'm on Facebook distracted by, you know, Trump and all that he's got going on. And, you know, and then I'm just working all day long and I look up and I'm like, what the hell did I get done? Right. Because I didn't work to the plan. Right. It's not that we don't have a plan. Like there's a whole freaking plan. You know, I got pages and pages of things 
and plans that we are trying to implement. But when I wake up and I just start working and I don't refer to that plan, I look up and really nothing has gotten done. And that's the way many of you guys are operating in your travel businesses. You are working tirelessly. Is that a word? <laughs> Did I pronounce that right? You are working tirelessly, <laughs> tired a lot. Simply put, you're working a lot. You're doing a lot of activity, right? But it's not around the plan, right? You're doing a bunch of things that make you feel good, that make you seem like you're very busy. And we love the word busy, right? But they're not getting you any closer to not being your own employee, right? They're just a bunch of activities because you don't have a plan. There's not a vision. There's not a plan. And a vision and a plan are different, right? A vision is long-term it sets the direction, it's about the experience, it's about the emotion, it is about what it is that you want everybody to follow. So really, you know, it's referred to corporately, I mean, I don't know if this is a corporate term, but it's certainly something that I can relate to corporately as the North Star, right? So corporations will say, this is the North Star and we're all following that North Star, right? So make sure everybody understands the vision. Here's the PowerPoint, you know, here's 20 slides on the North Star, right? Here's the organizations that are gonna do their part to get to the North Star, right? And even though that all may seem like fluff when you're sitting in that, if you're in a corporate, if you're in a corporate environment and you've ever sat through, you know, the CEO's presentation of the vision and where we're going and how they're doing, right? And you may seem like that, that's a whole lot of fluff, but you know, for your travel business, you can create that. And I'm not talking about the fluff, but the vision that sets the direction for the path that each person that works in your business will be upon, including yourself, right? Now, the plan are the steps that you're going to take to get there, right? That's the difference, right? So when you sit down at your computer today, right, our plan of action relates to this larger plan that relates to this vision. Do you have that for your business, right? How many of you guys are working with a plan? Every day you understand the actions that you take, how they fit into the larger plan and how they ultimately fit into the vision. You know, I want us all to be transparent and I want you to understand just because you don't have it doesn't mean that you can't get it, right? So if you're working right now in your business and you don't really have a vision or a plan for your business, put a zero so I can see where you are at, all right? So those are the top two shifts that you need to make. You need to have a vision. You need to have a plan. How many, again, this is not about judging you, but making sure that you understand where you are in your business, too, right? And then making sure that you acknowledge where you are, right? And then make the shifts that, you, that are necessary so you can get to where you want to be, right? So then the very last thing, right? And, you know, my background is in um, planning, it's in strategic planning and uh, strategic management, project management, um, all of that. So that's my superpower, right? You know, I'm a certified project manager. I've been doing, you know, technical project management for as long as I can think of. And, you know, I love the planning. And so this season of the year is always sort of where, where I'm in planning mode. I love, love this time of the year, right? So it's really my planning time. And then I get to eat a lot of great food this time of year too. So this is like the best time of the year for me. End of the year, beginning of the year, because it's start, you know, sort of ending at all the beginning new into new plans, new vision, all of that, right? And so, okay, so then the very last shift that you guys need to make or be at to get to the CEO mindset is learning that investing in yourself is not a luxury. It is a necessity. If your job as a CEO is to create the vision, create the plan, right? And you don't necessarily have the skill set or the, the information or the support to be there. How do you get there without investing in yourself? It's not, it's not a, it's not a luxury to have that support and that knowledge. It's an absolute necessity. It's an absolute necessity that you're investing in yourself. And the investment that you make, you know that it has a long-term impact on you and your business, right? So it's not that, oh, I'm just, I, you know, all the things that I do from a purchasing perspective or a time perspective is about short-term gratification. That's the difference between an entrepreneur, employee, 
slash is CEO, right? It's really the long game, right? What am I doing today that's going to impact me 6, 12, 18, 3, 5 years from now, right? CEOs are doing strategic plans five years out, right? You're probably, most of you are not even operating six months out. You're operating, how many clients do I have right now? Oh, whoa, I don't have clients, but you're not doing the actions required to make sure that you have clients 6, 18, 12, five years from now, from now, right? So investing in yourself, your knowledge, and your business is not a luxury. It's not an expense. It's an absolute necessity. So the question becomes, as you go into this upcoming week, where do you need to make investments, right? So I read this, uh, I read this email, one of uh, somebody's email list I'm on which actually spurred this conversation, Uh, he wrote in this email, he said, you know, before I was a CEO and when I was an employee, you know, Black Friday for me was really about like finding as many gadgets and deals that I could find the cheapest way I could. And doing that gave me sort of instant gratification. This is his words. And, you know, that email like totally clicked with me because I was like, yes, I totally, totally remember my my space in my mind i remember when my daughter was like two years old i i did the black friday shopping it was the one time i've done it ever and i've never done it since um, but i went out there i went into those black friday streets and i stood in line and i fought the crowds and i was like i'm gonna get this i'm gonna get that i'm gonna get this and it was all about what i could acquire you know, in terms of, because it, it was a bunch of crap. I don't have any of the stuff that I bought that, you, you know, that 19 years ago. I don't have any of the stuff that I bought then, right? And we go into this frenzy getting ready to spend all this money and time because a lot of people, you know, maybe not so much COVID, you won't be out there in the streets, but you'll be online shopping to get some sort of instant gratification about, you know, kind of an escape, right? Shopping escape, whatever it may be. But the reality is this, right? Where could you be investing your time and money this holiday season that's going to help propel you and your business further long-term, right? Right. I'm not spending my dollars or my time on anything that isn't going to propel this vision that we've set before us. We have a large vision. Our vision is bigger than me. And I've said that many times. The vision that I have scares the shit out of me, right? The amount and where I see it going and what I want to accomplish is so much bigger than me. So everything I invest in terms of my time and my money is about the propelling of that vision, right? That's because my mindset is not on these actions, this short-term investment of time and money, right? What's going to give me immediate satisfaction I'm thinking long game, right? Are you thinking long game in your business, right? We are going to be shut in most likely again. We'll be at home, unfortunately, COVID. You know, I I am warmed and excited to know that, you know, pharmaceutical companies are working on a vaccine and, you know, two of them said that they've got a 95% efficacy, uh, you know, COVID and the results. But the reality is, is that it's spreading, right? My son just was talking and it's likely that his school will probably close. In. And it's and what happens is we go to these outlets that are going to make us feel good instantly, right? And we still forget the long game, right? COVID, unfortunately, is not the long game. COVID is going to get addressed, right? So the best thing that we can do during this COVID is prepare, is take this time to prepare, right? You make in your time while you have it, is it going to propel the vision? Is it going to help you with the plan, right? Because if you are one of those who are confident that you are going to be around from a travel business perspective post-COVID, which all of you should be, there should be no doubt in your mind that your business is going to survive COVID, right? Most of you guys are working other jobs and this is not your only um, source of income. Some of you, it is your source of income, right? And it is my hope that you were structured so that you could benefit for some of the dollars that were available to you. But my point is, is that this time, this downtime, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to invest in you and your business or are you going to waste it, right? A CEO is going to invest it, right? It's going to invest in activities and things that are going to help with the long-term gain. Because this, unfortunately, for many people, 
this is a lot of downtime that you're going to have before you. Are you utilizing it properly or are you just using it to serve so you can stop thinking about it? Or are you heads down trying to make your business better? And that's where I'm going to end tonight's conversation with, right, is take this time to invest in the vision and the plan that is going to get you from owning your own job to really benefiting from your own business, right? And being the CEO of your business. All right. With that, I'm going to let you guys go back to what you were doing this Wednesday. My name is Sunday Gardner. Again, the online travel boss. I come to you every Wednesday night talking all things that travel, launching, marketing, and mindset and operations for a successful travel business. With that, you guys have a great evening and I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.